everyone, it's Joe Carter here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another fortnightly reading vlog. Today is Thursday and it's about 10 o'clock in the evening. I have had the day off work today because we were getting our house sprayed for spiders and it's actually been really weird to have a day off during the week because that hardly ever happens unless I've been on holidays. I didn't read as much as I was hoping to, but I'm still moving along with the Goblet of Fire. I'm really hopeful to get this finished during next week because I only have 100 pages left. But these are pretty big pages because it's the illustrated edition, but I'm up to page 348 and there's 450 pages, so just 102 pages to go. I'm pretty clean to chuff through this. Another complaint I guess that I'll quickly mention while I'm doing this introduction is that I'm a bit disappointed at the lack of illustrations. That has been my main complaint for these illustrated books that for I don't I don't really want to comment on how much it costs because I don't know how much it costs to be an illustrator and to publish these kinds of editions. It's absolutely gorgeous. Jim K is a master. He does masterpieces. But I would be happy as a consumer to pay an extra $20 just so that I can get more drawings in this book because I just felt like they were lacking. And unfortunately I picked up this edition when I did because I wanted to look at the illustrations more than read the story. And that I think has diminished from my reading experience a bit because it's not like I was craving a return to the Harry Potter world. It was purely that I just wanted to look at the illustrations and I'm someone who doesn't look at the illustrations until I'm actually reading it so I can experience it with the story. And because there are not a lot of illustrations that is what was a little bit disappointing. So that's a bit sad. but. You know, Harry Potter is still an interesting story on any days, so I will touch you guys again later with hopefully I'll either be finished or nearly finished and I'll have different updates to give you. Hey everyone, just going to quickly update you. I'm about 50 giant illustrated pages away from finishing The Goblet of Fire. It's Sunday night and there's just two things that I want to point out. The first being... Harry, before the third task, Harry's invited to like a family luncheon with all like the champions and their family for the day. And he's like, oh, I'm not going in there. Like the Dursleys, even if they did turn up, which they're not going to, but even if they did, I don't want to go see him. And then Cedric sort of walks out from like the room and he's like, Harry, what are you doing? Like they're waiting for you. And Harry's like, ooh, the hell are waiting for me? And then Mrs. Weasley and Bill Weasley are there. And I'm like, oh, my heart just... Like, they are his family, and it just made me feel, like, so nice because he's Harry, like, really needing support at this time. And Mrs. Weasley is just there for him all the time, so I absolutely love that. And then the other sadder thing is, so, like, spoilers for anybody who doesn't know what happens in the fourth Harry Potter book, but, or the movie, but when Cedric is killed... That was actually really hard to see that as an illustration. That is an illustration. And it's like the flash of green light and Cedric is like falling back and Harry's standing next to him. And that actually kind of made me a lot more emotional than it has ever before because of the illustration. So I'm a bit hesitant to see what the next book is going to be like. Um, I don't want to get sad, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm hoping that I'll finish it tomorrow night so then I can start something new and I'm pretty confident that if it's not tomorrow, it'll be Tuesday. Bye. Hey everybody, it is Monday night. I have finished reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Illustrated. I speed read pretty much from the graveyard or halfway through the graveyard to the end of the book tonight. It was a big effort for me personally and I was just kind of over it by the end but I just wanted to finish it because I've been reading this for like so long and I know I've been reading like The Land of the Painted Caves with it as well but I just I wanted to get it done and finish and I did and I'm so glad that I did. I also started reading whilst I was finishing Harry Potter and The Goblet of Fire I started reading this thoroughbred book in my lunch break at work. So I take a book with me every day in case it rains, which it has been here. It's been fantastic. I'm pretty sure it's still raining a little bit at the moment. This is book number 39 in the thoroughbred series created by Joanna Campbell. I'm not really expecting to talk a lot about this except being like, hey, I started it and now I finished it because it's just really quick and easy to read. But there's like, I don't know, even just reading the plot of the back of this one, I'm like, 
it'll it'll still be enjoyable because they're relaxing for me, but it's nothing super special. I'm up to page 20 because I only started reading it today. My main book now is A Monster Called by Patrick Ness. I did start this last week when it was raining, but I got the sense, like the last fortnight's reading vlog, I took it with me to work again because Harry Potter was too big to take with me, and I was hoping that I could start reading this in my lunch break when it was raining or when I just couldn't be bothered to go for a walk, which isn't very often. But I have a sense that this is going to make me cry. <laughs> And I've been tearing up a bit, even though I am only on page 48. I'm only on page 48, but I just have this sense that this book is going to make me cry, possibly. I'm not sure. I mean, like, pretty bold statement, considering that the second book only ever to make me sob was the one in the last reading vlog. But this one, I just feel like... I don't know what it is about being older, but I just feel things a lot more deeply... This book, I'm not 100% sure what the monster is about because Connor seems determined that it's a dream, but then, like, there's all this stuff from, like, when he's been outside that makes him think it's not a dream. I'm not really sure, but him sort of describing really almost plainly, like, his experiences grow growing up too quickly as a 13-year-old with his mum that has cancer and his dad that's in another country was just... I'm, I'm feeling teary already, just, like, just thinking about him having to go through with this so I feel like this book is already it's making me teary that so it actually might make me cry as well I have high hopes to get this one finished in this reading vlog because it is so short and probably as well Living Legends and then I'll be able to go on to something that's a bit lighter because after that I'm planning to start reading The Clockwork Prince I think it's the one that Daniel picked for me, whichever one is the first in the Infernal Devices. Hey guys, it's Friday night. I didn't actually work today because I'm taking a couple days off for annual leave because Daniel is actually back and working a bit less. Well, not working at all. He's on holidays at the moment. So I've taken a long weekend on sort of short notice so that I can spend time with him. I just wanted to quickly do another obviously like another update another reading vlog I'm about to film stuff which is why I have lipstick on I'm trying this out I'm also trying out a different like camera angle as well like a bit back a little bit because I'm always like picking out a shirt and stuff like that but then you can't see it because I'm normally here so I'm gonna try back here and see how it goes I finished a monster calls by Patrick Ness Last night, I could have actually finished it Wednesday night, but I don't know what it was. That whole, like, Wednesday, I was so absolutely distracted. So, this is when I finished it. I might actually turn my brightness up a notch. Yeah, it's better. I don't like this shadow, like, over my face. Yeah, so, I finished A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I ended up giving it... Daniel actually now just came home. My, um... So, he left, and I started to set up to film... And then my sister, who's living with us at the moment, she come out, talked to me, wanted to like get my advice on what she should wear on the weekend. And then she's just left. And now, of course, he's back. So I'll quickly do this update because I really just want to talk quickly. I'm ending up giving this one three stars. I did really enjoy it. I think it has quality content and the drawing's also really nice by Jim K. But it's just, I am someone who's really lucky not to have really gone through a lot of grief in my life. So I didn't super connect with it because I don't know what that's like. But I really enjoy it anyways. And I'm going to keep it so that if in case... I feel like it's something that I'll probably have to read again to help me sort of understand grief when that does happen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so now I'm just making my way through finishing off Living Legends. I am at page 72. I'm really liking that I'm reading a lot of short books at the moment because I actually have something to talk about. I am actually really enjoying this volume. Some of the volumes, even though I still kind of enjoy it because it's relaxing, relaxing, some of them are a bit eh with like the plot because it's a middle grade series and it's one that has a lot of ghost writers. It's something where the quality isn't always on par and they just don't really care about it. But this one was actually really good. The main character in it, I'm enjoying a lot more. She's actually getting some maturity and the plotline is believable. And there's also lots of racing in it, which I find really interesting. They're all books about um, girls racing horses, but some of them focus a bit more on like the training and the breeding aspect, whereas this one has a lot of races in it, which I find really interesting. I'll check in with you guys again soon. Hey everybody, it's 
Tuesday morning. Welcome to my bathroom again. I have a feeling that you're going to be seeing my bathroom in a lot of vlogs because it's just so convenient that I can brush my hair while chatting. I finished Living Legends on Sunday morning when I was at my sister's. We had a cousin's 18th to go to on Saturday night and I got drunk a bit too much. Um, <laughs> drunk a lot too much and so did Daniel so we just hung around at my sister's that we stayed at last night that night in the morning making sure the alcohol was out of our system before driving home so that gave me plenty of time to finish Living Legends I really enjoyed it the plot with this one was a lot more solid than the previous ones were and I'm really happy with how it ended it felt really sick it didn't feel stupid at all and as I said I really enjoyed all the racing scenes so I started Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare last night, yesterday? No. On my, yeah. On Sunday. But I was so distracted Sunday evening when we were at home from the weekend that I didn't really get very far into it. But holy cow, I read a lot last night and I really am enjoying it. Really, really, really. I can't believe that this is the same author who wrote The Mortal Instruments. I didn't enjoy... I read the first book and didn't really enjoy it and then read the start of the second one before DNFing it. I just can't believe the change in the way that she's writing. The writing is just so much more interesting. I like the atmosphere of London in the 18, 1400s. I don't really know when. I can't remember. But I love the um, historical atmosphere and I just find Tessa as the main character is really interesting and we got straight into the action with her being kidnapped within like the first couple of pages. So, holy cow. It's crazy how like just different books authors can get so much better. And I mean it makes sense because this book was written after the Mortal Instruments, even though it's a prequel, so Cassandra Clare is probably a lot better at writing. But I'm going to end out the vlog now because it's Tuesday and I'll be putting this up tomorrow. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I feel like this has been a pretty exciting reading vlog because I've been finishing so many books. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye! Hey guys, it's still Tuesday, but I just got something in the mail, so I'm going to add a quick unboxing to the end of this segment. I don't know what... Look, I've ordered lots of things off the internet. And I don't know what, which one this is. So I'm excited. Ooh. Oh, yes. The Good Luck Girls. By Charlotte Nicole Davis. Oh, how exciting. This is another one of the ones that I got because I did that unhaul so that I could get some more diverse books. Oh, I'm so glad that I spent the money on the hardcover. Look how pretty this is. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, I'll read this to you guys. The country of Arqueta calls them good luck girls. They know their luck is anything but. Sold to a welcome house as children and branded with curse markings. Trapped in a life they would never have chosen. When one of them accidentally kills a man, five girls risk a dangerous escape and harrowing journey to find freedom, justice and revenge in a country that wants them to have none of those things. Cursed by Aketa's most vicious and powerful forces, both human and inhuman, their only hope lies in a bedtime story passed from one good luck girl to another. A story that only the youngest, almost desperate, would ever believe. It's going to take more than luck for all of them to survive. Ooh. Oh, and look. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I love it.